Taiwan safe. What do you think about when it comes to safety and wellness? Hi everyone, my name is Leah. Welcome to my channel. If you're interested in what life looks like living and working abroad, this channel's for you. Today's video is being prompted by a question, is it safe to come to Taiwan? So in today's video, I'm going to talk about a few topics of safeties and concerns that have been brought to my attention and how they are handled in Taiwan when it comes to foreigners. Before we dive in, let's start out with a definition about what a sense of safety as an expat means. There are two sources that I go to when I consider a new country that I feel are really comprehensive. The first is internations.com. They have a report called the Expat Insider that is released every year for countries all around the world. They get all of their data from expats that are living abroad in these countries and they've been doing this for about 10 years. They look at things like the quality of life, the ease of settling in. Do expats feel welcome when they arrive? The ability to find a job, the language barrier, how you get around. In this year's report, Taiwan ranked number five in the world out of 53 destinations and second for quality of life. My second source, the World Happiness Index Report, which asks residents what they think of their own country in terms of social support, freedom to make choices, and what they think about their levels of government. In this poll, Taiwan ranked 6.5 out of 10. And to provide some context, Finland ranked number one with a score of 7.4 out of 10. But I know numbers don't equal experience, and experiences vary from person to person. So I am here to share what my personal experiences have been like being an expat living in Taiwan. My first question that I received was about mental health. Mental health challenges are supported a little bit differently than what you may see or expect in the States. There are policies in place for individuals to tend to their mental health. Taiwan usually provides a short chunk of time, um, maybe like a few weeks to address it and that's it. Acknowledging and dealing with mental health issues is not looked upon as this journey to help someone improve, but rather how your absence affects the whole. When you live in a culture that makes decisions about doing things that are for the good of the whole, the individual and his or her mental needs, they just can't be a priority. Going to see a therapist for two hours a week is two hours that can be devoted to something else. Your family, your job. How does this affect you as an expat? Well, first of all, you're gonna be given much more leeway and understanding because you are an expat. For the most part, you can go past that two week window and still be outwardly supported for your efforts without much pushback. Behind the scenes, people may think a different story. Your counterparts don't have the freedom that you do. It's also wise to remember that you are in a culture that is very non-confrontational. The decision for you to prioritize your mental health may come at the expense of passive aggressive retaliation, maybe a toxic work environment, possibly victim shaming or blaming. It's important that you find a balance to get your needs met. I would suggest that you find a good support network, get counseling or support outside of contracted business hours, that includes lunch. This may be just the introvert in me, but I would be selective with who you should your challenges with at work just because it could come back to haunt you later because of the cultural differences and expectations. So here's to your mental health. Tend to it, nourish it, love it, and fight for it. What about crime? Is it safe here in Taiwan? Taiwan is ranked the third safest place in the world according to Numbio's safety index as of 2023. Property crimes, violent crimes, and petty thefts are really low compared to the United States. I do feel safe walking here at night. I don't ever feel like my life is in jeopardy or that it's being threatened. I leave my keys on my motorbike when I'm making quick stops at the grocery store. I leave my laptop in Starbucks when I run out to grab lunch. You know how safe I feel in Taiwan? There was one time that we had a guy literally walk into our apartment because he was drunk. He walked into the wrong door. My first inclination was to ask him if he needed help. It never even occurred to me that this man could possibly be a threat. That's how safe Taiwan is. Had this happened to me in America after the baseball bat and the knives and calling 911, posting it on social media to make sure that if I die, someone would know how I went out, along with the bail money for the assault that would happen, lets you know how different these two worlds are. Because when I say I have to de program myself from the safety that I experience here from when I go home. Man, man, I literally have to do a mental checklist when I go home now. Clean off the seats, set the alarm when you leave. Next question, should I be concerned about all of the earthquakes? In case you weren't aware, Taiwan has earthquakes. Lots of them. You live here, you'll be in one. There's over 2,000 earthquakes a year here. This country, I feel, has done a remarkable job for being prepared for earthquakes. People are regularly educated with drills 
drills, what to do in the event of an emergency, and I think their rescue operations are really top notch. They have an efficient early warning system here, and buildings are constantly being modernized to withstand seismic activities. Older homes are eligible for government subsidies that allow uh, authorities to make improvements on the building, so if you find yourself living or renting an older building, that is something that you can definitely ask about. Political concerns. I really do feel safe here in Taiwan. I feel that Taiwan is a safe country. I have felt that way for the last four years. One of the biggest things that I have learned being an expat was I had no idea how much thought and effort went into crafting a narrative in news media until I arrived abroad. The stories that were being reported could be a completely different story depending on what news media that you were listening to. Download three to four news apps from any country that is not your own and listen. Listen to the stories that are making headlines and see if all of these news outlets are reporting the same story and if the story is consistent. An invasion is not making the headlines here. Preparation and awareness are, but that's also common practice for every military in their country. Preparation is not an invasion. Also, check in with the locals. When I was in Korea, I thought for sure that Kim Jong-un was gonna invade South Korea because I listened to one news source that reported that day after day. It's only a matter of time. I had this sense of anxiety and I was concerned and I was making exit plans and I was talking to my sixth grade students and they put into perspective how far removed I was from that situation. I think they said it best. We have been dealing with this threat for decades. This isn't new information, it's new information for you. Perspective. I think Taiwan is navigating this relationship carefully. In the grand scheme of things, I really don't think that it is in the best interest of China to do a boots on the ground, all out assault invasion in Taiwan. But if you are concerned, you could always register with STEP. I have also made it a practice. I never go to a country where I do not have access to cash in hand to catch a flight one way home if I need to. I hope if you're considering Taiwan as your next destination, you don't let uncertainties and fears hold you back. These are my own personal experiences. I would definitely encourage you to do your own research so that you can gain your own insights. If you are uncertain how to prepare either financially to fund your move abroad, you should watch this video.